Que luego de hacer un... We saw your update, chill world, and triple lecker, both trains. Do they both have a chance for tomorrow? And also, can you just update us on Lavia and anybody else you might have coming back? No, uh, Chile and uh, Chilwell and, and Carney, Chile and Carney uh, are not available for tomorrow. We'll see for the next game, uh, Middlebra, the semi final of Fulham. They are doing well, they are uh, uh, training with the group the last few days, and yes, we are so happy with uh, the evolution. Um, Lavia is recovering after uh, his injury. We don't know, and still we don't know when he's going to be available again. Uh, he was in his squad, no? What problem? In his squad, problem in his squad uh, during the game against Palace. And another player that you asked me, or Sanyus? Mm, no, at the moment, no. Uh, no, player like uh, Benoit is... I think it's going to be available for the next uh, week. Uh, I don't know, another... Jesus, help me. Yes, already, I told. <laughs> um, I see nothing. No, no, nada, nada new. Okay. Uh, after the Luton game, you said that when the window opens, you'll sit down and you'll talk to your owners and your sporting director about what you might need over the next month. Have you had those discussions and do you have a bit more clarity about what you're going to be able to do in this window? Yes, not really. We need uh, to sit together like an official uh, meeting. I think we are always, every single day, talking and assessing the, the squad. I think now it's open the market and, yes, I think it's with some players that we, you know, uh, we own, like... Uh, uh, Andre Santo that is uh, come back from the loan on Nottingham Forest player that we need to yes to take some decision um, but I think I am happy with the squad that we have uh, I am focused and we are focused in trying to recover the, the, the player as soon as possible but uh, at the moment uh, yes we are assessing the, 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 the things we've seen the, the squad and see some possibility you know Maybe we can do or not, uh, but at the moment uh, we didn't take uh, uh, any decision. When I spoke to you just before Christmas, you talked about Conor Gallagher and you said it's down to the owners and the players. So are you any clearer as to what his future looks like here and whether or not you will still have him over the next few months? I think it's, uh, I think we need to talk about many, many things, but I think uh, it's clear that uh, Conor is still one year and a half contract with us. And of course, that is like uh, all the players in different clubs when you arrive in this point, always is about to, to talk, to take some decision for the future. And of course, always is going to be in between the club and the player. And, and of course, but in that uh, moment, nothing to announce, nothing to say. I think... The club is happy with him, him is happy here, and I think he's, uh, at the moment, nothing to, to say or nothing to announce. And for you, just finally, we saw you get to the semi-final and you talked about the galvanising effect of that win against Newcastle. Another cup competition starts tomorrow. How much can you use that to start building this club in the direction you want it to go and building that team and that team experience? I think it's a good opportunity because a uh, different competition allowed us to do some, you know, to uh, to provide to the team maybe sometimes different player to use and to uh, to see how they behave and how they perform. I think it's important competition for us, the FA Cup. Tomorrow uh, is really important, like it's going to be the semi-final against Middlesbrough and then the, the Premier League game against Fulham. But I think it's so important. I think it's in, uh, in the way that we are uh, building... Uh, this team and the possibility to provide the team and the player a good experience competing at a high level in the Stanford Bridge, I think it's an important game for tomorrow uh, for us. Uh, no, I think this is the process. We are happy with the timing. I think uh, we cannot be satisfied because I think we are in Chelsea and the expectation always is about to win. But if we analyze the process, I think. Uh, 
It's a process that takes time, and for sure, uh, the evolution is in the in the level or is in the moment that we uh, we need to be. Because for all the circumstances, I think we are in the in the in the situation that uh, we need to be. Thank you, Bradley. Talks more. Hi, Maurizio. Hello. Hope you're well. Um, the FA Cup is a competition. Chelsea have had a rich history in in the past. Won it eight times. Won us up in three of the last four seasons. Um, how important is this competition to, to you and, and the club? And is it a competition you feel like Chelsea can win this season? Of course. I think uh, the Carabao Cup and, and the FA Cup is a uh, competition that we need to try to to go further and, and to try to arrive to the, you know, um, but after, before, uh, sorry, we need to go to build our run step by step. I think the first step is tomorrow. And of course, it's really important competition for us because we are not involved in the European competition. And of course, in the Premier League, uh, we are in a position that we need to grow and to improve a lot if we want to play in the competition next uh, next season. But if through the FA Cup or through the Carabao Cup, we we can achieve, you know, to um, to play next season in in the in Europe. I think it's really important because uh, only we had from the beginning three competitions. We are still in the three competition and we want to be in the three competition until to then. And it feels like tomorrow's game could be a really important one for Raheem Sterling. And it feels like this could be a really important six months for him with the European Championships this summer. What's he got to do in the next six months to, to get himself back into Gareth Southgate's planning plans and on the plane for, for the Euros? And stuff? Sorry, I, I, you asked me about if it's an important game for who? Raheem Sterling. What's he got to do in these... You already know he's going to play. <laughs> eh? no. You suppose that you guess... That he's going to play. Yeah. But is it not an important next six months? For him? It's an important game for Chelsea, and then we see if he play or no. But I cannot, you know, answer a question that you don't know, and I know, but you don't know, and no one knows. Last one, Bradley. In terms of the goalkeeping situation, how, how impressed have you been by the way that Georgi Petrovic has, has come into the side in the last few weeks? I think really impressive. Because two came from the MLS and uh, performed in the way that he's performing, I think we are so happy. So please, he's a really nice and very good uh, professional, but he's a really nice person. And he's showing that he can cope with the pressure to play in Chelsea because it's never easy when you arrive from a different league and you are so young and take the responsibility in the way that he took and performing and behave because now the most important thing sometimes that we uh, not recognize is how he behave he behave the same that when arrived the first day and today after to play a few games in in Premier League and that is really important and to be consistent in his behavior that is why I'm so pleased for him because he deserves that's great that's awesome. thank you Alex BBC hi Mauricio hi um, tomorrow we'll Will it be a chance to try some players you haven't seen too much of where you make many changes to the team? No, not too many changes. We are playing with the circumstance, of course. Uh, but it's not going to change too much, the, the team. I think it's, you will see that maybe one or twice, maybe players that normally not, are not in the starting eleven. But of course, because we have some, some circumstances that we need to prevent and we need to anticipate problems. But I, we are going to... We took like a Premier League game. It's not that because it's the FA Cup and, it, and it's a second division, a championship uh, team, we are going to res- disrespect. We respect, uh, with full respect, uh, Preston. And tomorrow, you will see, we are going to put in place and, and, and start in 11. Uh, with all the guarantee to perform. You can make it three wins on the bounce tomorrow. How important is it to build momentum and get on these runs of form? Always is important. Always is important. Uh, because I think um, we are winners. We want to win. The, and the thing is, we need to work, you know, more and more and more and never enough. And that is why we need to settle on the on the, on the the team. Um but yes, 
it's going to be really important to uh, to go through to the competition and be in the next round. But before we need to compete uh, well and we need to be better and deserve. But of course, it's really important to go through. Nicholas Jackson has gone to a couple of nations now, so big chance for Armando Brozier and Christopher Kuku to get a, a run of games now. Uh, yes, Armando is going to be, yes, uh, it's a possibility to play for him. Um, what I'm going to tell you that uh, uh, Christophe is not going to start tomorrow because he suffered, you know, uh, some issues during the week and he's going to be on the squad, but he's not going to start. But we need to be careful with him, like I told you on the past six months that didn't compete and then when I start to compete, uh, you know, it's not the same. But uh, yes, Armando... He's going to have the possibility, maybe more involved, because I think he's uh, one of our, our main striker. And yes, it's a good possibility for him to perform and be relaxed, because uh, we we really trust on him and have a, an amazing potential and quality. It's now is to forget his injury the last year and and start to behave normally. Thanks, and welcome. Alex. Last two in this section, Simon and then Rahman to finish. Hey, Bruce Shane. Um, forgive me for asking another question about Connor, but... Go well, for him, yeah. Forgive me, no. No problem. I am here to answer, you know. As things stand, though, can you guarantee that he'll still be a Chelsea player by after the end of this window? Look, I cannot guarantee that I'm going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> As you see, that I can guarantee the, uh, another, another thing. No, I can... Look, um, in football... With us, with you know, it's, it's, it's a different part of uh, um, of the thing can happen, decision, and it's in between the club and the player. I cannot, you know, uh, only the player can guarantee, you know, or the club. The player more than the club because if the player have one year and a half more, he can stay. He can say, yes, I'm going to be here because it's, it's the, my contract allowed me to be here. And then the club is a negotiation always about to take the best decision for the club, for the for the player, for the team. And, and just sort of on a different subject, um, you've picked sort of two goalkeepers on the bench on a regular basis rather than perhaps giving a youngster, another youngster from the academy, an outfield player a chance. What's the reasoning behind that? 20 players before in the in the past I remember when I started to play we were 16 players and then 18 and now 20 I think it's too much player on the bench for me eh? it's easy to manage because you can store player there on the bench but it's, I think it's too much uh, we have only 5 uh, changes 9 players I think it's it's to, to put one more there I think I think sometimes it's you know because uh, the player need to compete you're the young guys, and you need to bring player to the squad to put, to include in the squad if if they they are going to have the possibility maybe to like Alfie or like Matos the possibility to be involved. If not, young player that one week and another and another are not competing. I I don't believe that these are positive things, and and that is why because sometimes no, I think we. Uh, prioritize the for them to compete rather than to be sitting on the bench on the weekend. That is the main reason. Thank you, Simon. Last question in this section, Raman. Um, Mauricio. Yes. Actually, about a player you normally don't talk about. Axel Disasi is coming and is playing consistently sometimes as a centre back, sometimes as a right back. How impressed have you been with his adaptation? Because he's just coming to the Premier League. And Yes, of course. I think his potential is still. We are waiting uh, for more. I think we are. Uh, you know, um, he has the potential to improve, uh, but it's true that what you are telling me is is doing well. It's not easy to arrive to the Premier League and to perform, and then uh, in you know in a team that in a process to build a team. I know with the defensive player always struggle a little bit more than the offensive, and and yes, and then uh, yes, we are happy because with him because he can play central, but but also can play you know uh, helping the team because of the injuries like uh, Reese, uh, James or, or Malagusto to play on the right back. 
But, you know, well, um, it's a player that <laughs> we knew, and it was a little bit unlucky because he's a different coaching staff, different coach. Maybe we didn't know that he can play right back because one day he played when we were in Paris Saint-Germain with Monaco and he was uh, was on the, on the side playing again in Mbappé, you know, in Monaco. And we saw he can perform like right back and say, oh, but you know, unlucky because you can play central back, yes, but you can play there also, no? And, but he's a central back and he can play in both uh, sides. And yeah, we are so happy because adaptation is, is really good. Suffer a little bit from the beginning, it's normal, but I think he's a, he's a player that can improve uh, and have the potential to improve more. Thank you. Thank you. Cameras off, please, at the end of the broadcast.